بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم today we're going to start talking about a brain MRI and this is going to be our first lecture on how to read brain MRI this lecture is going to be mainly an orientation about the brain MRI the sequences of the brain MRI the cuts of the brain MRIs and what is the importance for each cut of the brain MRI as you guys see here, uh, a brain MRI is uh, uh, extremely helpful for evaluation uh, of the brain uh, for any acute or uh, chronic process. Uh, there is a different cut for the brain MRI. As you guys see, there is a T1 cut here, uh, axial, in this case, where the white matter is white, and uh, the gray matter is uh, darker. And this is the white matter, and this is the gray matter here. Uh, next to it is uh, a T2 sequences. Uh, this uh, specific uh, cut is a flare image, uh, where the uh, uh, white matter is look uh, is dark, and the gray matter is lighter than the white matter. Also. Uh, uh, the fluid signal, as you see here on the flare, is uh, wiped out. Uh, so it does not look bright as in the uh, classical uh, T2 uh, cut. Uh, in the classical T2 cut, the fluid signal is bright, as you see here. This signal in the flare image, it will be wiped out. Wiped out. So you have a uh, uh, more clear image of the, uh, the gray-white uh, matter. Uh, these are the main uh, cut for the brain MRI. Uh, there is also uh, more cut uh, that uh, uh, are used in the brain MRI uh, regularly. Uh, these cut uh, like uh, diffusion weighted images. Uh, these are the cornerstone cut that we use uh, to, the di to diagnose uh, acute stroke. And as you see here, uh, acute stroke or restricted diffusion uh, would look uh, bright. This is the ADC mapping. And if the restricted diffusion is actual, uh, it will be bright in, diffuted, in diffusion weighted image, which we call it uh, DWI and it would look dark on ADC mapping. Uh, if it is uh, T2 shine th through, as in the case of uh, inflammation, uh, you will see it as uh, a bright in diffusion weighted image as, uh, and bright on ADC mapping, uh, which uh, uh, help differentiate uh, T2 shine through from uh, uh, restricted uh, diffusion. There's also more uh, uh, specialized cut uh, that we use to uh, detect any bleeding, like a gradient echo, T2. And as you see here, the blood would look uh, dark on this cut. So any dark spot in gradient echo, as in this case, where you see the arrows, uh, it uh, would indicate a bleeding. And uh, such cut would be very helpful in case of acute bleeding in, uh, in cases of uh, a chronic bleeding or uh, hemosiderin deposition. A uh, classical example for that is uh, superficial hemosiderosis uh, that is mainly seen in the adult. Uh, there is also more uh, fancy cut called susceptibility weighted image, SWI, which is uh, claimed to be uh, even more sensitive to uh, diagnosis of uh, bleeding as you see here, dark spots. These dark spots indicate uh, there is uh, bleeding, uh, regardless if this bleeding is a chronic or, uh, or acute. As a rule of thumb, if it is dark in T2, a bright in T1, it's a bleeding until proven, uh, until proven otherwise. Uh, I'm gonna talk uh, now about the uh, uh, MRI cuts. Uh, now we talked about the sequences. We're going to talk now about the MRI cu cuts. Uh, the cuts are the classical axial cut, which is the horizontal cut. Uh, 
uh, as you see here. And there is a, a sagittal cut, uh, uh, which is uh, vertical front to back, and coronal cut, which is uh, vertical uh, left to right or right to left. And each cut is uh, helpful uh, to uh, uh, look at certain structures of the brain. This website, headneckbrainspinemri.com, is extremely helpful as it has uh, a brain modules or neuro modules where you can just point to the to the uh, where you can point to the structure and it will tell you at the bottom uh, what is the what is the structure. Uh, so here I am pointing to uh, corpus callosum, and at the bottom you can see. Uh, uh, that it uh, it is it will tell you that it's uh, corpus callosum. Now, if you look at the sagittal T1 cut, remember T1, uh, white matter would look white, gray matter would look gray or darker, uh, fat would look white, bone would look uh, fat like here would look would look uh, bright, bone like here would look uh, dark. This is the bone marrow here, as you see. Uh, uh, this cut is extremely helpful and uh, in to look uh, more specifically at certain structures. One of the classical structures we look at on the sagittal T1 is uh, basically the corpus callosum. Uh, you see here, uh, uh, I am pointing, the corpus callosum has uh, four parts, pointing to the rostrum of the corpus callosum. Here there is the genome of the corpus callosum. Here there is the body of corpus callosum, and here is the splenum of the corpus callosum. So on, on, on sagittal T1, it is extremely important to look at the corpus callosum and its four structure. First, you have to look uh, if it is uh, absent or present, especially in pediatric. And if it is present, is it uh, thick, normal thick, or is it uh, uh, very uh, thin, which indicate bilateral uh, hemispheric dysfunction, as uh, as in the case of uh, 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 brain atrophy. It is also uh, very important to look at it uh, in the adult, especially in demyelin demyelinating lesion, as in the case of uh, multiple sclerosis, and also sometimes uh, uh, you can uh, a certain tumor like butterfly. Uh, glioblastoma blastoma multiforme uh, can cross the midline through the corpus callosum. Another structure, key structure to look at it on the sagittal T1 is the uh, is the vermis of the of the cerebellum, as you guys see it here. Uh, you need to look if it is absent or present, and also you need to look if it is uh, uh, normal or if it is atrophy, especially in kids uh, in, in kids' brain. And it's also very important in the adult. Uh, here you see the anterior cere uh, cerebellar lobe. Here you see the posterior cerebellar lobe. And here you see the, the, the vermis. Uh, this part is the midbrain. And the tegumentum of the midbrain. This is the tectum of the midbrain. I am pointing to this part is the inferior colloquy. The, the, this part is the superior colloquy. Uh, you also need to look at the pons, or what we call the pregnant lady, to see if it's normal, if it is uh, uh, if it is hypoplastic or does it have uh, atrophy. A classical finding, for example, in congenital disorder of glycosylation is pontocerebellar atrophy. You will see uh, atrophy of the pons as well as atrophy of the cerebellar vermis and the hemisphere. And uh, down here you need to look at the medulla oblongata. Remember, the brainstem is a more a reflection of uh, how many cells or how, 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 how intact are the tracts that are coming from the uh, cerebral cortex down to the, uh, uh, to the uh, spinal cord. Uh, another key, point, uh, key structure to look at it in the case of uh, uh, sagittal T1, you need to look at uh, also the clivus, as you guys, uh, as you see here, this is the clivus. It's very important to look at it as a certain tumor like uh, a clivus cordoma uh, can be seen here. 
this is the cella torsica, and usually you will have, uh, uh, and you see here the pituitary gland, and usually the posterior to pituitary would look uh, bright normally in T1, which is the posterior part uh, to the to pituitary gland. Also, remember when you are look when you look at the MRI, you are responsible uh, to look at the all parts in the MRI. So you need to look at the calvarium here, or the 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 the, the bone, and the, uh, if there is any uh, abnormality, that draw your attention. On top of that, also as you guys see here, uh, you see the vertebral artery, and uh, if, you, if you go up a little bit, bit here, you see the basal artery. It's, uh, it's also important to look at this structure uh, because uh, sometimes you will see uh, uh, a dilatation of the basal artery or abnormal dilatation. Sometimes we see thrombus in the basal artery. Uh, here you can see the, the beautifully the vertebral artery. And uh, the more we go lateral, as you can see from here, uh, from the coronal cut, you will see the cerebral hemisphere the cerebellar hemisphere, I'm sorry, the cerebellar hemisphere. You can also see here the, uh, the, uh, the eyes. And of course, you can see here the internal carotid artery. And as you navigate lateral, you can also see, uh, uh, you need to continue to uh, scan if there is any abnormality, whether in the brain or in the cortex, or sometime if the cut involve the neck, you need also to look at the neck, uh, specifically uh, the throat, uh, the posterior pharynx, as well as the thyroid gland, which sometimes can be included in this cut. Uh, another important structure also would be helpful to look at in this case is basically the, uh, as you guys see here, the optic chaos uh, would be helpful to look at it. Uh, here you can see the uh, fornix as well as the anterior commissure and you also here see the uh, mammillary body you navigate all the way to the extreme left uh, to the extreme uh, uh, left then all the way to the extreme uh, right and you see here the the, the anterior antenna carotid artery uh, anatomy beautiful and very clear. Then you go all the way to the extreme right, looking at the same structure, and looking at the whole brain uh, MRI. Now uh, another uh, cut is uh, is axial uh, T1, uh, basically uh, on T1. Uh, the most important uh, uh, thing you can see uh, the anatomy the best on uh, on T1. Uh, so here you see the cortex, and uh, in this case we are looking at the parietal lobe. Uh, here we are looking at the caudate nucleus, and here the putamen. Uh, the uh, this is the geno of the internal capsule. This is the anterior lump of the anterior capsule, and this is the posterior lump of the anterior capsule. And also you see here the thalami uh, bilaterally. Uh, uh, here you see the atrium or the tricone of the lateral uh, ventricle, and this is called is peritriconal area specifically. And the green area here is called the temporal lobe. Uh, here on this area is what called sylvian fissure. It can be very prominent in certain uh, disorders of uh, uh, metabolic disorder or congenital disorder. And as we go down, you can still see the uh, here the middle cerebral artery. And you see a Mickey Mouse here, uh, which, uh, which represents the cerebral peduncle attached to the midbrain. And uh, this uh, bridge structure <coughs> is uh, called the red nucleus and as you go down you see the uh, cerebellar, cerebellar lobe start to uh, show up as horizontal lines and as you go down here we are uh, we are seeing the, the pons here the middle cerebellar peduncle 
and as you go more down you come down to the middle oblongata uh, this cut specifically is made with the contrast as you see the uh, anterior carotid artery uh, or the vessels are taking the contrast and as you go up you see beautifully we are here seeing the anterior carotid artery in the cavernous segment and it goes up 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 and at this at this time it would give the ophthalmic uh, take out the artery, but it would give the ophthalmic uh, uh, artery, and as you go up, you go to your, you come to the supraclinoid signal, and then you go to the middle cerebral artery, and here you see the optic chiasm nicely, and here you see the mammillary body uh, 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 nicely. As we said, T1 is extremely important for anatomy in the pediatric neuroradiology, uh, so you can see clearly if there is any evidence of uh, migrational abnormality. And of course, you, uh, as usual, you are responsible for the whole brain MRI. You look at, so you need to look at the, uh, the, the calvarium. You need to look at the eye if there is any abnormality. And here you see the, uh, the uh, muscles uh, uh, of the eyes. Then as you go down, down, uh, as you go up, I'm sorry, you will uh, you can see here the, the optic nerve bilaterally. Here the optic nerve and here the optic nerve. And you see here the vertebral artery bilaterally. And as you go up, they would cross and approach to form the say, basilar artery. And as the basilar artery goes up, it will give to uh, it will give uh, it will give uh, branches, which are two branches of the posterior cerebral artery. Unfortunately, they are not very uh, obvious here in this cut. Uh, now to go back to the uh, coronal section. Uh, coronal section is very helpful to look uh, at the uh, brain MRI. Uh, also, if there is any atrophy, it would be uh, very obvious here. And uh, you see also, you look at the, at the uh, cerebellum, if they are two lobes or if they are attached together, as in case of uh, rhombocephalosynopsis, you also can appreciate the, if there is any uh, ventricular dilatation. And you hear, see here, guys, the middle cerebellar peduncle. Here you see the uh, lateral ventricles, and here the third ventricle, and here you see the quadrigeminal cystium. Of course, as uh, you keep, you need to keep looking at the uh, the whole brain MRI. This is bilateral the vertebral artery. This is the uh, medulla bronchata, and as you go up, it's the pons. These are the middle cerebral peduncle attached to the pons. Remember the middle uh, cerebral peduncle are attached to uh, the pons, the superior cerebral peduncle between the midbrain and the cerebellum, and the inferior cerebellar peduncle between the medulla oblongata and uh, the uh, 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 and the cerebellum. Uh, of course, also you can see here the, the course of the internal carotid artery showing very nicely. You see, you can see here also the optic chiasm, very nice. And in case of uh, pituitary protocol, uh, they do more thin cut through the pituitary gland and uh, uh, it is extremely helpful, uh, uh, the coronal cut in such cases. Here you can see uh, the infantibulum. Uh, it is also very important to see if it's midline or deviated in cases if you are suspecting uh, pituitary adenoma, microadenoma, or pituitary uh, tumors. Now, as we uh, go forward, you can see here the optic nerve very nicely. Uh, the uh, uh, muscles of the eyes, media rectus, lateral rectus, uh, superior rectus, inferior rectus. And as we go forward, as we keep going forward, uh, one of the structures that can be seen uh, better on a T2 
is the uh, is the uh, uh, the first uh, optic nerve. Uh, it will be seen uh, at the bottom here, but this will be more appreciated and better appreciated on uh, coronal uh, T2 images. Again, uh, you really have to also keep looking at the, at the uh, whole MRI, and in most of the cut, they might uh, provide a better uh, view of the, of, the, of the sinuses. Uh, here you see the sphenoid sinuses, uh, the sphenoid sinuses here and uh, you really need to comment on, on that if there is any abnormality on the, on the sinuses. Here are the sphenoid sinuses. Here are the maxillary sinuses. And you definitely need to comment on that. And here the frontal sinuses are shown uh, very uh, beautiful. Most of the MRI cuts would uh, be more, uh, it would show more uh, parts of the, of the sinuses as well as of the uh, cervical area. Uh, uh, this uh, would conclude the first part of uh, our series of uh, how to read the brain MRI. I just want to uh, tell you uh, uh, it is really important to, uh, to read the MRI and get to used to uh, know the MRI cuts and the structure as you need to know uh, first what, is, uh, if the, what are the structures you are looking at, second if the structure you are looking at is normal or abnormal, and uh, third, if, the, uh, if it, the structure you are looking at is abnormal, you need to know if this is abnormality is a normal variant or uh, if it is uh, 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 or if it is a pathology. And if it is a pathological, you need to know how to provide a differential diagnosis. Uh, key point: you need uh, to focus uh, on the whole uh, MRI, not just on the brain. It's a given you need to look at the brain and comment on, uh, on any abnormality. But remember, uh, whatever shown in the MRI, like uh, uh, the s uh, sinuses, uh, uh, the vessels in the MRI, if there is any part of the neck is obvious, or uh, uh, the calvarium, you definitely need to look at that and get used to look at that as uh, uh, ignoring, looking at that can uh, 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 can lead to catastrophic uh, uh, abnormalities. Uh, my name is Dr. Al Siouf, consultant child neurologist, uh, and uh, this is uh, this concludes lecture one uh, of how to read a brain MRI. Uh, uh, please visit us at American uh, dot and look at the video section. It will this lecture will be uploaded there uh, for you guys to review. And I look forward to uh, start the uh, part two of the uh, brain MRI. Thank you and have a good day.